Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to a special edition of the LGBT Community Center's Artist Talk series. I am Denise Astorino. My pronouns are she and her, and I am the Community Engagement Coordinator here at the Center. You know that we have been doing these monthly talk, uh, artist talks since the beginning of the year. We did a couple last year as well. And we are implementing every once in a while, we'll have a special artist talk um, to, promote a, to promote a special event coming up at the center, um, whether it is a, you know, a live production, a, an, an artist show, or as with my next guest here, a book signing coming up next week, which we'll talk about the date and time later. But I am excited to have a friend of mine on today. Um, she is newly a volunteer, uh, signed up during COVID, which I, yay for that. Um, she is an amazing uh, photographer. I just found out a poet as well. She's also part of the wind song chorus. Uh, she's been doing that for seven years. And she's also a docent at the, uh, it's, where is the docent at? Cleveland Museum of Art. The Museum of Art. And she's been doing that for four years. So she's everywhere, she's a busy lady. Um, and she's been a photographer and a poet for most of her life. So I would like to stop talking and I would like to give it over to Ann Swider. Hello, Ann. Hi, Denise, hi. Thank you for joining today. Well, thank you for having me. Thank you. Yeah. So the reason we were doing this artist talk today is, is I wanted to get the word out there about this incredible book. And here's this incredible book that you, you took pictures, you wrote, you uh, published, you are promoting. It's now on Amazon, you said. It's all over the place. And we are going to have this book signing here next week. So I wanted to get you on today to talk about your work, um, like how you started and how you have progressed, because I always thought that you were a photographer. And then I was like, oh, she does poetry too. Check that out. But you informed me that it was kind of the other way. So do you mind talking before we get into the book itself? Do you mind talking a little bit about your history and just your your journey as an artist? So sure. Um, yes, I started being interested in poetry at the end of high school and the beginning of college. Uh, poetry just just really resonated with me, struck me. And one of the things that I learned, I don't know who said this, if it was one of my college professors or not, but the best definition of poetry that I ever heard was poetry is distilled language, mm. distilled language. So I think of like a Jameson distillery and you know, and the, the, you strain it and you, and you do yeah. special things to it and it drips and it drips until it's finalized. Oh, wow, what an image. Yeah, it's, it's always stayed with me. Yeah. And so um, that's, what I, that's what I try to do in, in a sense when I write. Okay. And um, so I began to talk uh, poetry and uh, my junior year in uh, my sophomore year in college, I won the, um, Miami University Literary Award for my uh, poems. Wow. So, and then um, after I graduated college, I wanted to go back. I had studied in Germany uh, my junior year. And I, I, when I went back, I decided I wanted to do art, study art. Mm -hmm. And I got a hold of an old 35 millimeter camera and I just went bananas. <laughs> I loved it. I just wow. loved it. Cool. So I, I did some graphic design, but really the, the photography took over. And when I came back to the States, I did start to work as a professional photographer for many years. Okay. So what, um, what drew you to photography in over uh, the other art mediums? So, you know, I can't really say, you know, you can't say what really grabs you, mm -hmm. but ever since I started looking through a camera, it was something about seeing, really seeing. And it just, it just thrilled me, you know? Uh, and I also got to know a, a German commercial photographer and he liked me, took a shine to me and had me be his like a uh, client representative. So I would get clients for him. Yeah. And he let me use his old Hasselblad and he let me use his studio when, when I wanted to. So it was just a marvelous combination of, of circumstances. And, uh, and I, I just, I just can't say why, but I loved it. I really loved it. 
and uh, the visual Im impact of it, I think, and seeing. Okay. So. Yeah, I love that. I, I love that definition of that, just the seeing of it. Because like, um, it, it's interesting how you tie in the book, you tie the, um, and we'll talk, like, I, I want to get to that, like, you tie the images with the poetry. And every every photograph it tells its own story there's a world of stories that are in a poem even though it has distilled language that language is it's so carefully chosen you know because it's it's sparse you know you're not writing a whole novel so you're using your words carefully and with photography it's the same thing you're telling this whole world of stories within this one still image and so i love that but so talking about the book a little bit, um, I guess that was my question. So did you write the, did you write the poems for the book or, what you, or you didn't? You, so you had these images. How did you come upon, like you woke up one morning, you were having your coffee. You're like, hey, I think I'm going to make a book today. <laughs> How did you decide that? Because this is, that's a huge thing. So <laughs> well, to tell you the truth, it was almost like that. Okay. <laughs> really, really. I mean, one day I was sitting at home. Um, I don't know. I think I was looking at some of my iPhone pictures. Uh -huh. and, and it struck me that, you know, I could try to make them with the poems. Because I had a bunch of poems. I had poems for, for a number of years. Yeah. And I think the, the oldest or the farthest back poem in the, in the book is about uh, 2000. Okay. So over over twenty years. So I just thought, well, I don't know. Could I do that? Could I match the the photography with the with the poems? And I just thought, well, look, I'll give it a try. You know, I had I, uh, to answer one of your questions. Um, I did not do them together at all. Okay. They were not one did not, not inspire the other, but I tried to match them over time with what I thought was maybe the best image for the poem. It was hard. That was very challenging. It took okay. me two years. Wow. Yeah, about wow. two years. So not, yeah. So even though you didn't write the book, like the layout and the format and the structure of it took two years to do. Wow. How long did the process of publishing it take? Like once you had it down and everything, how long did the, how long did that process take? And what was the process of that? So you had all of these things. Did you do it yourself? Um, did you do the layout yourself? So what was the process of that? Okay. Well, the layout and design primarily I did. Okay. But I had a really good helper, um, an associate, mm -hmm. um, Dave Van Horn, I want to give a lot of credit to because he's also, uh, he's the head of the Cleveland Writers Group. He's done that for 15 years or more. Mm -hmm. And he's helped many people get published and, and, and knows all the, the ropes, you know, how to go about it. And so he helped me. I think from the time that I finally got the book ready to, to work with him, it was maybe six months to, to doing the publishing, to doing the final wow. version. We did a couple of versions of the, of the cover. And um, the cover, by the way, is a wraparound cover, just to show you. Oh, yeah. The, the, yeah, the front is that, but, but, the, but the same image, just one image is that, that oh. we put some the, the text on the back of. So oh. that's all one photo. Wow. That's yeah. Yeah. That's, we'll see if we can. Yeah. Oh. Right. Um, Edgewater, Edgewater yes. Park. Yes. Which is many the muse for many photographers. <laughs> it, is. it is. It's a wonderful park. Wonderful. That's wonderful. Yes. Wonderful. That's the, and I think we were talking about that during our little dress rehearsal was that tree and that those trees get so much like photo time. It's not yep. even Funny. So there's an energy that just draws people to them. So yeah, very that's inspiring. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So I got. I'm curious about. So who um. What are your. Who are some of your. Uh, who are some of your. Um, I guess who like who inspires you like when you're when you were studying photography when you're studying poetry who who do you look at and go wow I really you know I really like their style of like the way who did you study who do, who really do you, sparks you and like I really want to like learn to be like take pictures like that I don't know what I'm trying to say but who inspires you <laughs> okay well some of my um, 
favorite photographers, mm -hmm. Ansel Adams. Mm -hmm. I love his landscapes, always loved his landscapes. Did you yeah. know that he was trained to be a classical pianist? He had, he just, he had to go back and forth for a couple of years, whether he was going to be doing piano concerts or doing photography. He decided to do photography. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So Ansel Adams, um, Albert Stieglitz, who was the husband of, of um, Georgia O'Keeffe. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. And I, I love Georgia O'Keeffe, even though she wasn't a photographer, her, her paintings, her images are just so stunning, too. Yes. Um, I'm trying to think who else I could say. I mean, there's a lot of contemporary photographers, mm -hmm. you know, that have gone on and... Um, and I admire their work a lot of the in the uh, you know in the seventies and eighties the magazines yes. like Look magazine, Life magazine. Yeah. They they were very um, motivating to me. Yeah. Did you find that you were drawn more towards um, kind of one one genre than another? Like, were you more of a landscape or were you more human? Or because you gave it, when we get into the slideshow in a minute, you gave me you gave me a neat range of like architecture to human expression, you know, to, you know, to uh, an animal. So what were you drawn to mostly, you think? You know, that's a really hard question for me because I was really drawn to just about everything. Mm -hmm. I, I do like portraits. I do like doing people, both candid and portraits. Mm -hmm. um, but I also love landscape and nature, trees in particular. I've always, always been drawn to trees. Interesting. And, um, you know, anything also, I mean, inspiring like the lake or water. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's really hard for me to say, mm -hmm. for example, my son, he is, he's actually quite a wonderful photographer in his own right. Uh -huh. he, that's not his occupation. His occupation is, is, um, he's a professional violinist, but he could be a, a, a photographer, but he only likes nature. He only does um, you know, nature close-ups or ma macro or, or landscape. That's his, that's his thing. I, I just really, I can't have, I don't have a favorite, just gotcha. everything. Yeah. yeah. There, that comes that seeing part when you see everything and you're just drawn to different things from everything. I love yeah. that. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Okay. And what about poetry? Poetry? Um, well, to be honest with you, Shakespeare has been one of my greatest, greatest, uh, you know, loves to, to read his works. It's just so the poetry and the play is just so incredible. Yeah. And I love the rhythm. The iambic pentameter, pentameter is really good. Um, you can tell that in your poetry. I, yeah. I When you're reading it, I'm glad that you're going to be reading it for us because, uh, yeah, you can tell the you know, you can tell the fluidity of it. It, it has a, um, it has a little bit of a classical, a classical feel to it. So, yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And um, um, I'm trying to think, uh, uh, well, uh, I'm blanking a little bit. Um, uh, um, Oliver, uh, Mary Oliver. She, oh, okay. She, she, Mary Oliver, she, I think her poetry is, is incredible, it's dynamic. Unfortunately, she just passed away recently. Yeah. And, uh, but she's, I think, a wonderful, wonderful poet. And, I'm, and it's not because, not just because she's a woman, she's just a great poet. Mm -hmm. And um, Edna St. Vincent Millay, she's one of my favorites. Okay. okay. And Emily Dickinson. Nice. Nice. That's How can you miss? <laughs> I can go wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so getting a little bit into the book now, um, you, it's not just a, it's not a collage of different things. Like you have a, you have a kind of a main theme and it is, and it's called uh, Love On, Love On, Romantic Poems for Her uh, with Original Photography. So you have a theme of, it, you call it romantic po you romantic poems. So talk to me about what made you feel like you wanted to explore that theme in the book. Well, I just found that a lot of my poems dealt in one way or another with the idea of love. Mm -hmm. You know, some are, are personal or more personal. Some are a little more universal. Mm -hmm. But I just felt that that love was a really important thing to to me and and I think to many most people you know, yeah. and so I wanted to express that in different ways. 
mm -hmm. different poems and images. I love the different, and we'll go into this now, but I love the different, um, the, the variety that we have and that you span with the poems that you chose to share with us today. So, all right, let me see if I, I never get this screen right. Hold on. <laughs> These artist talks go so well and so smoothly until I try to do the screen share. Here we are, okay. So from the beginning, here we are. Okay, artist talk. Author and photographer Ann Swider. Hey, that's you. Lavon, Lavon, romantic poems for her with original photography by you. All right, so this first image I love. First of all, this reminds me of my one of my best friends, Katie, who I'm gonna send her this video when we're done just to say that I mentioned her name. But I love this image. Um, talk to me, it is titled Dating. Okay, well, I was thinking the poem explores, I think, a, a, what it's like to date and, you know, the, 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 the very beginning, the brink of it, of dating and, and how that might play out. And I wanted to do a close up of um, a, a woman's face or eyes. I, had, I took portraits of several women, uh, close up, just, you know, just their eyes and top of their forehead and, and stuff like that. And I found hers to be so um, inviting, just beautiful eyes. Mm -hmm. And she's a friend of mine from the art museum. Okay. And um, and uh, so I thought, well, of all of them, this is the, this is the best. And I really, I feel they're sort of um, penetrating almost her eyes. Yeah, yeah. It's really, I I love how I love how tight that you made it. You didn't just do her face. I mean, it really shows the expression. And when we were talking before how you were saying, exploring the expression of what it's during a date or getting ready for a date or the whole thing of, I mean, dating throughout the ages for all of us were like, you know, and she, she may not even be whoever, but like that look right there is like, you're wondering what she's thinking at that time. So I love that. Very fun. Okay, so then the next image we have, and this has a poem accompanying it, this is called Provincetown Bay. Um, if you'd like to share um, the background on this image and then we can go into the poem. Okay, well, uh, some of my poems have a little bit of a story to them and this is one of them, Provincetown Bay. Um, I was staying on, uh, uh, on Cape Cod with a friend of mine at a timeshare and we had the the bay right behind us. So every morning I would go down and, uh, you know, dip in the water, swim in the water. The first day I did that, a, a stanza of the poem came to me and I kept repeating it in my head over and over again so I wouldn't forget it. And then I ran upstairs and would write it down. And this happened, honest to God, this happened for the next three days. So four days in a row, four stanzas, and the whole poem almost completely came to me. Wow. Okay. So I've never had that happen before. But. Wow. So, and this image, uh, where, so this is Provincetown. Can you talk a little bit about like this image and why you were drawn to capture it? Well, again, this was the, the scene right outside where we were staying mm -hmm. and Provincetown is, and, and, Pete, and the Cape Cod is just beautiful. Yes. And um, this was the sun early morning rising on the reflecting on the water it's not filtered yeah it's not it's not uh, manipulated in that way and i just thought i wanted to see the the waves coming in and um, that's what happened just just really simple just beautiful and i love that it inspires this next poem so if you'd like to share with us sure provincetown bay schools of the minnows Winds from the westward, tide rising on the shore. I've been too landlocked, afraid of the ocean, afraid of the motion two bodies can make. A heart may break. Surrounded by dry land, miles of scorching sand leading to my brain. Thirsting for water, getting drier and hotter, life ever more insane. The cries of the gray gull calling her sisters, secrets and whispers echoing over the bay. 
Provincetown waters, the ocean's daughter, bringing life to its creatures, beauty and grace, the teachers. Do I have the courage to drop the worry, slow down the hurry my body demands? Life by the seashore stretches time more, horizon sky meets sea of endless possibilities. That's lovely. I just love the imagery. And again, it, it's, it's one of those things where it so seamlessly ties with the picture, even when it might not have been, you know, it's, it's beautiful. It's just beautiful. So. Thank you, Denise. Yeah, of course. Okay, so this one, ideal becomes real. This is probably one of my, this is one of my favorite titles because it can mean so many things. And the juxtaposition from the picture to the poem, after I heard you read the poem from the first time, can you talk to me, um, talk to me about the poem first, and then I wanna come back to this image, so. So what is the, um, talk to me about why the poem and where you came up with the idea about the poem. Oh, okay. Um, well, again, it's a kind, it's a kind of relationship about a relationship. Okay. And um, the, I think you asked me about the title. Mm -hmm. um, what I, what ended up happening was the, as the poem progressed, it became more and more concrete, more and more definite, you know, starting out more abstract and becoming more definite. Yeah. And so ultimately I, I decided on this title because yes, something that you think is, you know, untouchable, unfathomable can become real, can become, can be there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then this image, how did you talk to me about the image? And then how did you decide this would be the greatest image to intertwine with the poem? Well, this is Lake Erie, mm -hmm. taken at Lake Erie, and I took several uh, pictures of the sunset that right then, just before this, and uh, it was a beautiful sunset, and the reflection on the water, and then all of a sudden, out of the blue, this motorboat shows up and starts making circles right where the reflection in the water from the sun was. He mm -hmm. just went around in circles, <laughs> and I thought it was... I just loved it. I thought it was really cool just to happen to be right at that spot. Right, right. And it's really interesting because it makes something that is so, you know, because I, I, I see so many sunsets now, like you take walks and everything. And it's just a, it's such a, it's such a, like a, a, the gloaming time of day, if you will, you know, it's a very wishful time of day. And it's like you said, it's very, um, it seems very wistful and very abstract. And then this boat comes out of nowhere and it jars this beautiful, like wistful picture of this, like, oh my gosh, I'm in this dream world with this sunset. And then suddenly it's like, wow, there's this boat <laughs> that takes this beautiful sunbeam. It's like, hey, we can jar that up and make it real. So I love <laughs> That just made that just makes me laugh when I think of this image and that you were able to take this, you know, the seemingly just, you know, image and put it together and find something that tied it with the poem. It, I, I, I love that. I just love that. But OK, my dear, let us not use that, but let us ideal becomes real. Ideal becomes real. I hear your shy, sweet voice, a little hesitant, stuttering a little, telling me all your weaknesses, your faults, your hesitations, that it takes you a long time. I hear your voice, the sound not really listening to the words, the maladies, my weaknesses for you. The imperfections in your mind are yours. I don't mind. I ride the sound of the waves of your breath. I skim the undulations of the heartbeats beneath. What I hear is you, is yes. Yes, you are telling me. Yes, you have these faults. 
Yes, you are frail with mortality. Yes, you have loved and lost. Pain lingers like a cloud, like grief. Yes, you want to love again. Yes, you and I are here. Yes, yes, now yes. That's lovely, Annie. That's lovely. I'm not even gonna talk too much on that. That's a beautiful piece. So, okay. The next, I love this image. Okay. Talk to me about third eye. Okay. This was taken in India um, in 19, I'm sorry, in 2015, my third and last trip to India so far. And this was at a temple that uh, in the small city of Darwar, so, southeast, southwestern India. My um, teacher, my guru, the lived in that area, in that, in that city. And they had a special temple that um, the, uh, this was a, uh, it was a celebration, a festival for Krishna, I think. And this little girl would come with her mother and there were other kids there too for the, for the uh, different ceremonies and pujas and things that they do in, in uh, the temple. And I would see her and I was taking other pictures. I was going around, I was just really having a blast taking pictures there. And um, I saw this little girl, she saw me. And finally one day she comes up and just stands there in front of this little bin. And she looks at me like, aren't you gonna take my picture now? So I said, I just, we didn't say anything. You know, I, I don't know if she knew English, I don't think, but I just took her photo and she was just, she was beautiful, just stunning and beautiful. And you can see so sweet and peaceful. You won her trust. Hmm? Oh, she's just lovely. I said, you yes. won her trust. Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, I, I, you know, I forgot to ask you, you've mentioned India. What did you go to study there? You've mentioned a, you've mentioned a guru a few times, but what did you go yeah. to study? Well, I went there to study yoga. Um, oh. I, I met my uh, wonderful guru uh, who since passed away, but I met him in 1974 wow. and uh, ended up taking three trips to India. The first one was the longest. The first one was about three months. And we went up in the Himalayas and to a special site in the mountains and other things. And then two other times. The last one was at, at um, 2015. And uh, this was at my teacher's city. And his, his temple was just a walk away from where he lived. So it was really wonderful to be. It was like seeing Indian life the way really the people lived it, not being a tourist, not being something else, but just seeing the way people really lived and their support, their families and their, their uh, spiritual support. It was really wonderful, really wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful. I have to, we don't have time now, but I'd love to talk more with you about your travels there. That's really interesting. Sure, anytime, I'd be happy. Cool. Okay, so then, okay, this, I love this image. I love all of these images. I keep saying that. Um, okay, <laughs> so talk to me about this. The colors in this just blow me away. So what am I looking at? Okay, well, what you're looking at is inside a church. Mm -hmm. It's actually Lakewood Presbyterian Church where, um, my, uh, where I was rehearsing with Wind Song, Women's Feminist Chorus. Okay. And the light was coming from, the right hand side was coming from the right side mm -hmm. and it was going through stained glass and the, the colors projected onto the choir loft, which is made of, um, I think like, like a kind of cement or concrete, you know, and it just reflected on there. It was, it was beautiful colors and they, and they, it was like, you know, unpredictable that they're, they're, they would be dappled and they would um, get lighter and darker. So I, I, I stopped uh, rehearsing for a minute and grabbed my camera and, <laughs> and took a couple pictures because I loved, it was just beautiful. I loved it. Well, I, yeah, I mean the, the colors themselves, but just the angles and all of the different lines and shapes in them, it's so intricate, but it's, yeah, I just love it. It's almost like, it, it's like pride in church. It's like, woo. <laughs> yeah. I love it. I love it. Okay. So where love is not. Um, talk to me about how this image sparked something in you to match it with the poem and tell me about the poem we're about to hear. 
Okay, well, I, I had a little difficulty at first finding the right image for that, for that poem. Mm -hmm. um, because that poem has a lot of, um, I think in some ways, some spiritual meaning to it. And it's a lot of emotional things for me. Um, I wrote the poem uh, in 2018 um, after my, my guru passed away. And also just about love in general, what it is and what it's not. And then, um, but I did see this, this photo from, with the, with the you know, stained glass colors. And I thought that's, that's the best I can match it with. That's the best I can do. Yeah, very nice. Okay, so here we go. If you can. Where love is not, love, love on. Despite heartbreak, the heart beats on. Even with unbearable loss of a loved one, a parent, a child, a lover, the heart still beats. The rhythm of life, the flow of energy coursing through this physical body, giving not only life, but hope for another minute, past the grief, the hurt, the chaos of our daily lives. Feed on, brave heart. Love is everywhere, nowhere where love is not. Love on, love on. That's beautiful, just beautiful. The imagery that you can bring to life in such a, so few words, <laughs> you know, I mean, you just have a gift for bringing very sharp, very clear imagery to life in your poems um, without, losing, without losing the rhythm of it. I mean, you don't, um, yeah, you don't you don't surrender the rhythm of it. I mean, you still have a structure to it, but you um, you really evoke some beautiful imagery in your poetry. Very nice, very nice. Okay, so this next poem is something. It's a little bit other than well, it's another type of love because it is a connection that we all had dealt with last year and are still dealing with. Um, talk about the fallen. Well, the two most recent poems that I put into the book um, are actually um, about COVID-19. Mm -hmm. One I wrote in last April, mm -hmm. uh, you know, about a year ago, called Shifting COVID-19. And this is the second one that I wrote. Uh, it just happened to be on 9-11 of, of this year, of last year, 2020. Um, and it's, I just feel because we're all going through this really hard time, really unusual, you know, um, thing that maybe happens not even once in a lifetime. Yeah. I just think we, you know, we need to support each other. We need to understand and have a lot of sympathy for each other because this is, this is terrible. <laughs> this is really hard. And, um, you know, hopefully we're coming toward the other side of it, but we still have to support each other and really um, even give each other, cut each other some slack, I think. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah, it's beautiful. I, yeah, I don't want to dwell too much on it because I don't want to, I don't want to take away from the, yeah. the power of it. But, um, and you said you wrote two of them? This is the second yes. one. Yes, the first one was is uh, in the book also. Mm -hmm. It's called um, Shifting COVID-19. Mm -hmm. This one's called The Fallen. I don't know if you can see this, Denise, on my on my camera here, but this is the illustration for the, um, am I doing it right? Oh, Which I one? will, we'll show it, to, let's show it after, um, let's show it after I stop screen sharing because your camera is really tiny right now, so. Okay. Okay. okay, so we are going to, um, there's one more image after this. Huh, I love this. So can you talk about this? And then there's a poem that goes along with this one. Okay, uh, yes, this one, uh, the poem is called Cats. Mm -hmm. And this is my cat, my wonderful cat, Boo, mm -hmm. um, who was a stray that we found on Halloween Eve on the street, by the way. 
he ended up living 17 and a half years as my cat companion. Mm. And he was just a prince of cats. I mean, he was like a dog. He would <laughs> come to the door when I came home, he'd follow me all around the house. And it was, he was very, um, he was not afraid of anybody. He would always let people pet him, but he was just like a wonderful cat. Mm. And um, unfortunately, you know, he, he had to go over, over the Rainbow Bridge a few years ago, but he was just, he was a beauty, a beauty. And the, the, the poem, I make an analogy between cats and women. <laughs> and uh, okay. so that's where that, where that comes from. Okay, very fun, very fun. Would you like to share it? Sure. sure. Okay, okay. Go ahead and read it. <laughs> oh, you don't have that one? Okay. Yeah. All right. Cats. We women and our cats are more attracted to them than to our lovers. Cats never talk back, argue, pitch a hissy fit. Although they have real claws and can hiss and scratch, cats don't say cutting, hurtful words that wound. When they purr and rub out of pure pleasure, they carry no baggage, no hidden agenda. Cats allow us to scratch their ears, stroke their fur, without ever expecting us to marry them. I have to think about that one for a little bit. <laughs> I don't know my thoughts on that one yet. I'll get back to you. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to stop this one right now. Um, I do want to see that image though, that you were talking about with, uh, with Fallen. Okay. Oh, wow. It's a, it's a tree trunk. Yeah. Can you see it? Yes. Oh yeah. Yeah. Quite clearly. Yep. I see it. Yeah. Wow. Oh, that's intense. Yes. Yeah, and we were talking about that. I mean, it's just the um, the overwhelming mess, like the overwhelming feeling that people talk about with, I mean, the fear of COVID and, you know, the uncertainty, but it's the isolation and the loneliness and the stillness. You know, there was a lot of, there was a lot of power that we found in stillness in 2019, you know, and some of it was, some of it was positive. We learned to be, we learned to be with ourselves, but a lot of it was terrifying. You know, we had to, we had, we heard the sound of our own voices and didn't know what to do with it. You know, we, the, the earth kind of just breathed <laughs> and it was, uh, yeah, I mean, it was, it was terrifying it, and it's still yeah. it, you know, it's, it's a lot of us are, are coming out of this cocoon and kind of like, how do we react around people now, you know? So yeah, there's, there's mm. a lot of, there's a lot of newness there. Yes. And Bambi on the ice is what I say. <laughs> Bambi on the ice. Okay. So I want to get the information out there. Um, I totally just lost. Oh, here it is. So the book love on love on um annie is doing her book signing here at the center um next wednesday march 19th and 12 30 it is in person it's not it's not virtual um come in say hello get a book you can get it signed by this wonderful author for author photographer um and she will talk a little bit about the book and um come and say hello to us. Please come and say hello. Um, we just want to say thank you for coming up. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Um, some of the other things that are coming up, um, our monthly artist talk on May 23rd at 7 p.m. is Corin Self. He is um, an actor extraordinaire here in Cleveland. Um, and then on June 4th and 5th, you know what is coming up. We've got virtual pride and we got pride ride. So uh, June 4th at 7.30, it will be broadcast on channel three. And then June 5th, 10 a.m., get, uh, get down to Edgewater. Sign up ends May 15th. So whether you want to volunteer or whether you want to do the pride ride, 
May 15th. So email if you got some issues, but um, come out and be with us and celebrate. Um, yeah, and that's what's coming up. We have a whole slew of stuff coming up through this these next six months. So be with us. And we love you. And thank you, Annie, so much for Thank sharing. you so much. Thank you. Absolutely. Uh, thank you off screen to my man, Anil, who was our, uh, our tech man today. He is amazing. So, and there he is. Hi, Anil. <laughs> so, thanks, everybody. And we will hopefully see you May 19th at 1230. So, bye, everybody. Bye.